friends, I'm Jess from Even the Sparrow Homestead and welcome to the homestead. This is our debt-free property and we're going to take you on a tour. So we're going to be adding a lot of food trees to the property but I was really excited when um, the previous owner told us that we already had some food trees on the property so um, here is a pawpaw tree. I've never tasted a pawpaw in my life but uh, there's a few of them right here that are pretty close. But I guess they're supposed to taste like, uh, kind of like a banana mango custard. And they're kind of soft inside, so we'll see what those are like. Um, we also have a cherry tree on the property and a nut tree of some sort. Um, there were tons of green cherries on the tree when we first took uh, the look around the property. But by the time we got here, they must have ripened and the birds ate them all because there is not one cherry on that tree. We live off of a fairly busy highway, so we're going to keep that in mind when we uh, place our animals and things here on the property. But up close here to the house, I think I'm going to turn this giant weedy marigold bed into a big herb garden. Um, so that'll be fun. There are tons of bees around because there's lots of clover out in the yard. So I thought this was kind of funny. There is some sort of maple it looks like, but I don't think it's going to be with us very long because there are tons and tons of holes all over it, which I think may be from a woodpecker. Um, so that means there are bugs in this tree. and. I don't think it's doing very well so this maple may be coming out it looks like our property ends here where uh, all this thick stuff starts but this is actually just the edge of the yard all of this property over quite a ways we walked um, we walked the front of the highway here to see where the edge of our property was and we found the barbed wire edge so we have quite a bit of pasture land over there um, I was really excited though while we were walking the property the other day because we found some wild raspberries on the edge of the, on the edge of the yard here. Oh yeah, right here. There's a bunch of them. I mean, they just go, there's tons and tons and tons. Now I'm not climbing back here right now, obviously, because there are tons and tons of ticks and I'm sure some snakes in here, but lots of berries in here. So basically, someday we're thinking we'll probably use this area toward the road here for goats. And then there's a really short stumpy pole back there with a little yellow band around it, right where the really big trees start. And that is the edge of our property there. And then there's a barbed wire fence. The um, guy next door raises a bunch of cattle. So there is a barbed wire fence that separates the property and it goes clear back into the woods. So we do have woods in the property and I can't wait till this winter when we can actually get out there when we're not going to get attacked by ticks and chiggers <laughs> um, to see what kind of trees and stuff we have out there because maybe there are more uh, food trees of some sort. So this side of the yard here we're picturing a ton of uh, fruit trees and nut trees things like that have this be our orchard area um, since we're avoiding the other side since there's the septic uh, system on the other side we don't really want any edibles on that side so we scored a couple of actually three clearance fruit trees the other day um, we saw that they had some peach trees on clearance and we truly went to go get a cart and by the time we came back there was only one left we don't know what variety it is um, hopefully it's like the others that said that they don't need a pollinator um, because it will not have one um, and we picked up two plum trees, so that'll be fun. We're going to get those added. We're trying to get our asparagus and, um, you know, rhubarb, things like that, uh, perennial plants um, that take a while to be fruitful. We're going to try to get that in this year, so that way we can get food sooner from those. We have a really nice shop. Um, we can do all sorts of things in here. There's a huge stack of wood. Uh, that the previous owners left for us to burn in the uh, wood stove inside this winter so we don't have to use so much propane. So we're really excited to try that out this year. 
um, but there is plenty of workspace if Dustin wants to do some welding or whatever metal work he wants to do. Uh, we have a really nice shop. We'll give you that tour later on. So we're kind of toying with putting the chickens over on this side, possibly. Dustin found a really cool um, little, I guess, I don't know what this is, some sort of think, plow thing. It's a plow. But that'll be great for making little furrows and dropping our seeds in. That was just in the tall brush. And Dustin saw some other metal, old metal equipment. Um, but it's kind of tick central and we're not going in there. So, but yeah, this is our well house here. And then it's kind of separated by some barbed wire. Our, our property jogs over at the well house here. So along this fence line here, there are tons of roses. Uh, so that'll be fun for collecting rose hips and things like that to make some teas. But yeah, on this side of the um, yard here, the previous owner put his garden back in this corner here. So we're thinking we'll, we'll do that for a fall garden this year. And uh, maybe you know i know we missed most of the growing season this year during like the move and everything like that so we are going to try to get a garden in just for some fall things and then start uh next year by tilling up another area so we can do like a summer and a fall garden next year but this whole back area can you see where those t posts are there's like a little fence that's up so we're thinking at least this large for the garden area coming all the way back to this other fence line it is our pond that has no water it was kind of fun we got to see it filled up it had rain like crazy um, you know the week before we moved in and so we got to see what it would be like if it were to hold water let's go take a look okay so like Jess mentioned this is our back area uh, this is our pond our empty pond. The goal is to fix that up, uh, fix the leak, fill it, and stock it with uh, some bass, uh, catfish, and some panfish of some sort. I know Missouri has some regulations, so I'm going to have to do a little research and see how that all works out. Um, so this is the back side of our property. Uh, it's nice. We have a nice deck coming off the back of our house so we can fish off the back of the deck once the pond is filled. Okay, well, so this is sort towards the back side of our property. Um, now, this area that we've shown you so far, that's pretty much two acres. All back here in the woods, that's a whole, uh, probably another two acres of land. Um, the back here is the burn barrel area. Um, there is some debris back here. Now, this tree right here, this is probably my favorite tree on the property. I love how it, I don't know if you can capture that, but how the branches just reach out. Okay, so back here is the burn barrel. That's where I get to burn some trash. Um, now that is our, our land also. It's all wooded. Uh, like Jess mentioned, we're not going to probably venture back there unless we have good protection or um, tick spray of some sort. Um, so... The previous property owner told us that uh, there's turkey that come out of these woods, deer that come out of these woods, a lot of squirrels. He was a avid squirrel hunter. Uh, I think it'd be great if some deer would just pop out because off our deck, then I could uh, during the season I could grab uh, or harvest a deer uh, for the year or two. Um, now we're shy one acre of property to get a landowner's tag in Missouri so at some point I'd like to ask our back neighbors here or our neighbors across to the uh, south of us you know see if we can buy a couple other acres then we'll get a landowner's permit um, and that enables myself to 
harvest, I think it's up to five deer with no tag. Uh, I have to look a little bit more into the regulations. So that is kind of the back side of our property. We're not going to go going through the woods till uh, fall, winter. We'll give you that tour later on. I think we may have some blackberries here too, look. Look at all these thorns though. Yep. Woo -wee. It's a ton of berries. We I'll just have berries everywhere here. I'll get ya. I don't like snakes. I'm like Indiana Jones. Hello, my friend. Now he's eyeing the camera pretty good. He's just smelling. Just smelling. Okay, now that if the pupils are like cat's eyes, then they're poisonous. But if not... Venomous. Oh wait. Yeah, they are. So if they're like a cat's eye, they're venomous. But I think this is a rat snake. Which is good. I mean, they eat mice. He ain't hurt nothing. Probably just gonna slither across the deck. Whoa! Okay, so he's pretty long. I don't know if you can see that. Trying to make some noise. Oh, okay. So he's going underneath the deck. Oh, that's nice. So we're not quite ready to show you the inside of the house yet. It is in need of an update, but this place, I guess, was more about the property than the style of the home itself. Um, we didn't want to live in like a total dump or anything, but... No, I mean, some people got, you know, they like to fix things up. We wanted to take more of our energy into just starting the homestead itself as far as getting chickens and ducks and goats. Still on the search for the garden tractor. Um, and we need it because it's hard <laughs> to see what you're stepping on in the yard and you have to be super careful with it's, the snakes and everything around. And you've seen our friend, um, we decided to call him Ralph. Ralph. Ralph the resident rat snake. Um, well, thanks for joining us. I'm Dustin. This is Jess. And we, um, this is uh, even the Sparrow Homestead.